well. Now I am beginning my lecture. So, Banach spaces of delta subharmonic functions. First of all, what is a delta subharmonic function? Some magic word, maybe you <laughs> will. That is a difference of two subharmonic functions. Well, uh, so um, this is some strange object because if we write uh, one delta subharmonic function is equal to another one, then a question is arising how they can be equal because in a lot of points these functions even are not defined. Well, but the question is being solved, this problem, very easily. For instance, if we have u uh, delta, super, uh, delta subharmonic is u1 minus u2, two sub subharmonic functions, and some other delta subharmonic functions v is v1 minus v2, again, two subharmonic functions. Then let us understand that u equals to v is this. Mm u1 plus v2 is uh, u2 plus v1. And uh, then these functions are defined anywhere, and the equality is understandable completely. Okay? This is this, this is that. If I write u is v, then we can understand in this manner. So, well, then going to Banach spaces. Well, as I have to speak about weighted classes and spaces, I have to begin from history, some history, for uh, to overgoing some misunderstandings which were spread among the specialists by the Rudin, via Rudin's book, books. Well, the next page. So, about the, to the weighted spaces, early results. One of the early results, maybe the earliest, is the results, uh, result of Biberbach about approximation by rational functions in the Dirichlet spaces of this form. Uh, of, uh, functions holomorphic in the unit disk, the derivatives of which satisfy this condition. This he published in 1914 in Palermo Conti Yesta There is a Italian journal. Well, uh, oh. later mm, some other result was obtained by uh, to, uh, Wilhelm, yes, Wilhelm Wirtinger uh, in 1932. That was about orthogonal projection and representation by the square of the Cauchy kernel in the Hilbert space, this Hilbert space. That is uh, over the disk. That is the Lebesgue measure, simple Lebesgue measure. Well, now I have to demonstrate uh, two pages from the Walsh book. Well, there is a book, a classical book, uh, of Walsh. It had many publications in many versions. The last version, yes, the last, uh, the last version uh, has two pub had two publications. So uh, this is uh, about uh, the Walsh book is called. Uh, to approximation and, to, and interpolation by rational functions in the complex domain. Well, now, uh, so page 150. So the class about which I said, told, uh, so, well, so let f be of the class L2 in the disk C prime, he is the disk, the unit disk for him. And uh, oh, L2 are the functions which are uh, just Lebesgue integrable with the square over the unit disk. 
Well, uh, the essentially unique function uh, to f of the class Hardy class in the disk, such that this thing uh, is least is given by this formula. So this formula is formula of Wirtinger. Continuing, the formal development of f in this will of uh -huh. Well, uh, what this means? Well, if we, uh -huh. Uh -huh. well, uh -huh. well, uh, so um, when f of L two is just f holomorphic, then the upper uh, double integral is zero surface integral. The s is the Lebesgue measure, obviously. Well, then one more page. One more, please down, please down. How to do that? Down the page. How to do that? Uh, it, it, it went. The series commission. Well, this equation for f can be rewritten. For, of course, if f is an uh, arbitrary function of the Hardy class, then that formula is valid w with that f. So the representation and orthogonal projection are proved by Wirtinger. Well, and then he is speaking about some uh, uh, generalization of this thing, which is interesting to him in his book. And then please, more, much more down. Please, much more down. More, 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 down, down, the next page. Well, okay, uh, please, that uh, uh, red, uh, red uh, rectangle, complete, uh, well, it is, well, well, uh -huh. what is he writing? Of course, one may st study approximation in a multiply connected region. Uh, in the case of least squares, by orthogonalizing, uh, orthogonalizing a suitable set of rational functions. See Gika and Bergman. Fin. So this is information, scientific information. I do not speak about myths. Uh, later, uh, this uh, to, uh, projection theorem of uh, Wirtinger was um, extended to the case of any P in the books of Hudzi. And uh, by a strange, um, some um, strange decision, I don't know how to say that, um, that was called by the name of Stefan Bergman. Well, so Wirtinger's theorem is being called by the name of some other person. And then, <laughs> and then well, uh, uh, and this was spread among of many specialists. And they are using this name and referring to some works of Bergman, which do not have any connection with their work. <laughs> well, why and how and so on, I don't know. That can be my, my own opinion, you can have your, yours. Well, now we are coming back to my presentation. <laughs> Look, so well. Uh, which are the uh, uh, some other early results? In 1936, in the book of Nevanlina, one can find a result of this type. He is considering his uh, uh, characteristic function for uh, functions, meromorphic, uh, meromorphic functions, and he is defining such a class. This class. Well. Well, one can see that in reality, this is the supremum of the uh, to, uh, 
alpha order at uh, fractional uh, integral, riemann liouville integral of the uh, characteristic t. Well, he's uh, defining this class and he is proving this, that the zeros and poles of such meromorphic functions satisfy this condition. This is proved in Van Lina's book. Later, Mkhitar uh, Jirbashan, well, or I shall say Jirbashan the elder, I am younger, the younger one. <laughs> well, so the elder, he uh, t, t, uh, he uh, worked, he, well, he was wishing to uh, generalize or or making better this result of the Valina and he flees the next page. It is possible this. Oh yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. If this is true, then obviously that series are convergent, and there is such a representation. So he is writing a representation. Obviously he. Uh, this representation is not Nevanlina representation because he cannot write the Blaschke products. So he is writing some special products of Blaschke type, which are becoming Blaschke products when alpha is what? Zero. Well, or min minus one. Well, uh huh. So he's, he is writing a quotient of products and then uh, 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 an integral in the exponent. Well, Mm -hmm. uh, well, I am not defining these products now here because that will be a, that that will take a, a lot of time. Well, uh -huh. can we? Well, we can. <laughs> well, uh, by the way, as an obvious uh, to, um, subset of such classes, um, he considered uh, functions. Uh, of uh, this type. And he proved two representation formulas. That was in 1945. He proved these two representation formulas. The, even the, the second one even is more si significant because it can, uh, it is for, you, you also for harmonic functions. Well, now, uh, oh, what more? Uh -huh. Well, look, in uh, the upper, uh, in the things which we spoke before, the operator, the riemann liouville operator is applied to the integral means of the function. Look, I shall show on the example of the Nevanlina characteristics. What is happening if we are writing this thing? Then this is that. The uh, operator, is, uh, operator is applied to the logarithm uh, to the integral means. You see. But what will happen if the operator, uh, the riemann liouville operator, will be applied immediately to the function? Well. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Immediately to the function. For instance, to write this. This is the riemann liouville uh, fractional integral immediately to the function logarithm. Well, what will happen? He constructed a theory of so called n alpha classes. Factorizations, representation factorization, and so on, characteristics. Uh, which all become the classical ones when alpha is zero. Now, then after that, he had an idea, the Jirbashan Elder, in 1970s. He had an idea to replace this thing, one minus t, alpha minus one, by uh, a white class of omega functional parameters. Uh, which can have any rate of decrease near one. 
Uh -huh. And uh, the operators which can be simply written in the form such form. This is a very general thing, yeah? Well, this leads to his theory of n omega classes, the union of uh, uh, classes of meromorphic in the unit disk functions, the union of which covers the whole set of functions meromorphic in the unit disk. Because this omega can compense any growth of the function near the boundary. Well, well, delta subharmonic extension of M.M. Zirbashan factorization theory and a similar theory in the half plane. So, well, I dealt with such a problem for a long time. Uh, a passage to the more general delta superharmonic functions. Look what is happening. I wrote here that uh, delta superharmonic is a difference of two superharmonics. Okay. If we take a meromorphic function, that this is uh, a quotient of two holomorphic functions. Then if we, shall, if we write logarithm modulus f, that will be logarithm modulus f1 minus logarithm modulus f2. So this is uh, some simple case of a delta super general superharmonic function. Okay, so that was natural to think that it is possible to extend this theory to delta superharmonic general delta superharmonic functions. And what appeared? Appeared a very strange and maybe beautiful thing. It appeared that the omega characteristics of M.M. Jirbashan can be, can ha they have a very simple connection with Nevanlina characteristics. Just the uh, T omega UR is T of Nevanlina characteristics of L omega U. So all theory is being reduced to the Nevalina theory. You see? He couldn't reach this because he didn't consider delta subharmonic function, functions. And the difficulty was in uh, defining uh, some um, complicated potentials. Well, complicated potentials. Well, even he had uh, some, uh, he, he had an idea that such, uh, in 1966, he had an idea that such potentials have to exist. But nobody proved this. Well, I could prove. And uh, therefore, I could uh, extend to delta superharmonic functions. Well, this formula, very simple formula, reduces all this theory to the uh, th theory of Nevalina class. Of Nevalina class. Well, I uh, constructed also a similar theory in the half plane, where instead of that operator, such operator is being used. Here it is to infinity. Well, the difference of these theories is that in the upper theory, the apparatus of uh, Fourier-Taylor series is working, but in the lower theory, in the half plane, upper half plane, uh, the apparatus, that apparatus is being changed to the apparatus of uh, uh, mm? huh? Laplace transforms. Yes, I am sorry. <laughs> well, uh, well, now, uh, uh, so I uh, considered also um, the classes of functions where the operator of such very uh, um, complicated form with omegas is applied to, to the uh, to integral means of the function. So these are the classes over the surface. 
Uh -huh. Well, applying the operator to the integral means of the pth degree of the integral means of a holomorphic function leads to some theories in the disk and in the half plane where the representations of functions are given by the Jirvashan omega special omega kernels. Well, two times the tautology. Uh, these uh, representations generate the orthogonal projection for P is 2 and then isomorphism for any other P. For P is 2, an explicit isometry formula is found with the Hardy space, which is a completely new thing. In the three monographs before, about such spaces, without omega, of course. Uh-huh. These things didn't appear. But I have with omegas. And these are true also in the more simple cases which are considered in the before monographs. Well, Ries type representations are found for delta superharmonic functions, the Nevalina and Tsuji characteristics of which can have any growth rate. Well, these are done. If somebody is interested, I can answer any question after my report. Then, at last, I shall bring only one result. There are six spaces, but I shall give only one. Others are similar. So what, what can I say? Banach spaces of functions delta superharmonic in the disk and in the half plane. I shall bring here only one result in the disk. The results in the half plane are similar. So, well, so let this omega be of some white class of parameter functions. I shall not define it here. Uh -huh. And d be some numbers. Then d, uh, here is tilde, uh, is the set of those delta superharmonic in the unit disk functions u with associated charges nu. Charge is the Borel measure of the delta superharmonic function. Obviously, that is the difference of two non-negative Borel measures. It is called being called charge. Well, uh -huh. the supports of which are located in a ring. I'm sorry. Ah, yes, in a ring. And this norm is finite. So this is a Banach space. Well, which is the difficulty here? The difficulty is to, uh, to prove the, com the completeness of the potentials. That the, any sequence, Cauchy sequence, has a limit which is again is a potential. This is the difficulty. And of course, calculating such things for a very complicated, complicated potentials, which in a sense is a solution of some problem, which was posed by Zygmunt. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Well, uh, to some of these results about which I spoke, I obtained uh, with my pupil, mm -hmm. Joel Restrepo, a Colombian guy, very talented boy. Well, the future will show. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>